fractious debate. It's a debate that never actually ever goes away. A debate that is being had in countries all over the world with absolutely no consistent approach to it whatsoever. So today, William was visiting a centre for recovering drug addicts. And on the question of whether we should legalise drugs in the United Kingdom, he said it is now a massive question to be faced. And boy, he's right, isn't he? It is a massive question to be faced. And that tonight is the debate I want to have with you. Do our laws need changing? Is there now a case for decriminalising or indeed legalising drugs in this country, perhaps starting with marijuana and perhaps going higher. And that's what I want your opinion on. But I also want your expertise on it, particularly if you're somebody who has had a drug problem in the past. You know, is it, is it wrong that this trade is in the hands of the criminals? Might it be better if some of these things were regulated and sold on the high street in chemist shops. Please let me know what you think on this hugely contentious emotive issue by calling me on 0345 60 60 973. You can text me on 84850. You can tweet using the hashtag Farage and LBC at LBC. And of course, you can watch us live on Facebook and comment on Facebook too. My view on this has been pretty consistent since certainly 2010. I first talked about this on Question Time back in 2010, and it's a subject that I've returned to many times over the years. I mean, one in ten of the adult population use illegal substances in this country. So it is a huge issue involving millions of people. Much of the crime that is committed in this country is in order to get money to pay for drugs. They call it petty crime. But I tell you something, it's not so petty, is it? If it's your grandmother that gets knocked over the head and her purse taken. Um, many of our people who are in prison, both women's prisons and men's prisons, are there because of drug-related crime. I have always taken the view that prohibition very rarely works. And that when I hear government ministers, year after year, talking about the war on drugs, nobody has ever, ever faced up to the fact that it's been lost. We don't have a drugs epidemic. Drugs are now endemic. <clears throat> Capital. You choose the tunes on the Capital app right now on your smartphone, perhaps. Is it, uh, is it nice? <laughs> Suppose you could listen on a tablet, couldn't you? Capital. How are you swiping the tunes right now? You're on a tablet, maybe you're on a smartphone. Is it a nice, nice smartphone? Are you proud of that smartphone? <laughs> You're looking at it like, oh, drugs, you know, isn't um, going to get penalised in any way at all. Uh, there are states now in America that are holding referendums on the legalisation of, 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 of cannabis and it now being sold in shops. Uh, I, by the way, have never uh, taken illegal drugs. I've done a huge number of very stupid things in my life, but I've never taken illegal drugs. Um, I hope I never have to. But, I mean, if I was severely arthritic or whatever it is, then perhaps I might try. I don't know, but I've never, ever taken them. And I've seen the effect that drugs have had, the psychological effects that drugs have had on young people, uh, you know, who've not been too far away from me. And I hate drugs. I hate what drugs do to people. I can't stand it. Uh, although I suppose if tobacco was invented today or alcohol was invented today, they probably would be on the prescribed list too. And I can't say that I'm entirely clean on those two substances. But I, So I hate the effect. Um, and, and, and what is being sold as cannabis, it seems to me very often isn't cannabis. It's a resin-based substance that is 10 or 20 times stronger than the cannabis leaf itself. I cannot think of a subject that is more worthy of a genuine royal commission. I don't mean an attempt to kick the issue into the long grass. I mean a genuine royal commission that examines, have things in countries like Portugal, Switzerland, American states that have gone for legalisation. Has it reduced crime? Has it reduced addiction? And incidentally, has it reduced the number of deaths uh, that are caused by people who buy illegal substances, uh, which very often are not quite what they seem? So I, I think that it should uh, being really examined by a Royal Commission. Um, and I minded myself to feel that anything we can do to take this trade 
out of the hands of the criminals has to be a step in the right direction. So I, I begin this debate from that perspective, but I'm very keen to hear from all of you who've got experience of this or have seen family members go through this. Would it be better if we take up what Prince William has said and have a proper open debate in this country about the legalisation or decriminalisation of some of these drugs. Now, just to sort of remind everybody that doesn't know, the Misuse of Drugs Act, 1971, illegal drugs are divided into Class A, Class B, Class C. Class A, cocaine, heroin, Class B, things such as cannabis, Class C, things like cat and anabolic steroids. So there are differing levels of drugs in terms of categorization and in terms of sentencing if people are caught possessing or of course dealing too i'm going to go to karoom in slough good evening good evening nigel thank you for taking my call not at all now i mean what do you think karoom i mean are we you know i start from this position but i think when i hear the government say the war on drugs i sort of laugh because i think we're losing nigel it's not that we're losing we lost a long time ago yeah okay you know, it, it's lost. There is no war. You know, the, you know. I mean, America has been fighting the war on drugs for the last um, uh, forty years. You know, um, uh, and they haven't won. They're nowhere near close to winning. And now they're starting to legalize them um, uh, drugs. That's what their war on drugs has done. Um, uh, you know, and we. I think personally, look, I, I think it's wrong for people to think all drugs are the same because when I hear people on the radio or I'm um, talking who are. It's like ignorance. They don't know the difference between drugs. And like you just said, there are different categories of yeah, drugs. There's yeah, A B C. Yeah, 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 yeah. A B C. Now, personally, I don't think A class drugs should be legalized ever because they are chemical based. They're not natural. They're not. Um, uh, they have a different type of an effect than B or C class drugs. I definitely think cannabis should be legalized. I think the legal. Personally, I think the legalization of cannabis will um, uh, relieve stress on the community. It will relieve stress on the police. Um, it will relieve stress on our prison system. It will relieve stress on um, uh, our court system, criminal um, court system as well. Um, it will also, I think, if the government tax it and um, bring it in and you know monitor it, I think it will bring in a, a whole new revenue for the government um, and. You know, I hear people say, oh, well, smoke cannabis and you go crazy and schizophrenic and etc. Well, Nigel, I've been, look, I've been smoking cannabis since I was, for the last 17 years. Right. You know, I, I smoke, I smoke and, you know, I've got, I'm a family man. I own businesses. I, um, I don't smoke during the day. I'm, uh, I don't smoke when I go out. I smoke at home socially, at home when I'm on my own or with family and friends. Um, uh, I, it hasn't affected my life. I've got a mortgage. I've got. Uh, I pay. Um, so what are you? Tax, but but so Karim, 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 tell you me, know. what are you smoking? Are you smoking cannabis leaf, or are you smoking these resins that are sold in the name of cannabis? No, I'm not smoking re resins. I'm smoking right. cannabis, cannabis or skunk. What is called skunk mm. or cannabis? You see, my experience. Um, uh, you know. My experience. You know, friends of mine that have had kids that are teenage kids or kids at university is a lot of them have been buying. Uh, what is sold in the name of cannabis, which I have to say, in many, many cases, has had disastrous psychological effects on the minds of those young people. So so it's not as if, and, and you may be an example of somebody who's, you know, smoked this for 17 years, and you sound pretty straightforward and fairly normal to me on the phone, but my goodness me, you've got to admit that to a lot of young people, smoking something definitely. that is seen to be innocuous can be very bad news. That's the point I'm trying to make, that yep. if the government took over, yep. we wouldn't have those issues. They would be done. It's like when you go to Holland, I go to Holland, I've been to Holland a few times. I used to have family that live out there. Yep. I never had a worry when I went to a cafe that I'm, what I'm smoking might have something, might have, um, okay. uh, you know, something mixed in it. So, uh, so, so we sell it, we sell it in the high street chemist, we, we register it. Um, we make sure that it's of a quality that is not going to be uh, too directly mind-altering to young people, and we tax it as well, Karim, yeah? Exactly. Okay. Well, definitely. No, no, I, look. I, would definitely, I would definitely be up for that, and I would definitely stop buying from off-the-street illegal, illegal men, even yeah. if it costs more, because it would be safer, you know. Um, I would definitely be up for okay. that. And okay, one, and one quick question for you. If we were to adopt this approach to cannabis, would more people smoke it? I don't know. That that's not. A, they might. They might not. 
you know, alcohol's alcohol's been legal all my life. I've never drank a, um, a drop of alcohol, you know, and that's not a religious reason. That's just because I don't I don't like the smell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. Okay, Karim, you've made the point. You've made the point for the legalisation and sale of cannabis in the high street. You've made it extremely well, and I thank you very much for the call. Norman on Facebook says, no, they shouldn't be legalised, but the sale of alcohol should be curtailed. Busby says on Facebook, the war on drugs has made it worse. Legalise all of it. Bye-bye cartels and everyone below them. Chloe, who is a new caller, never called this show or LBC before, lives in Romford in Essex. Good evening, Chloe. Hello, can I just say you're amazing and thank you for everything you've done for our country. But anyway, back on to this, war, like we're talking about drugs. Yeah. Now, me and my friend use drugs recreationally. Right. Um, at festivals and um, not any other time, but at festivals. We don't drink alcohol, um, but we never, ever have any problems around. I've never seen any trouble the places I go. And I've been going to these places for six, seven years. Mm. The reason I think they should legalise it is that people are going to do it anyway. Um, but a lot of the time you don't know what you're buying. So that ends up being risky, and if people yep. are going to do it, I don't know anyone that doesn't do it. And I'm talking, I know people that are teachers, doctors, and they're not necessarily my friends, but I know them from Al, and they do it on the weekends to enjoy themselves. And they Chloe, don't tell me, alcohol, Chloe, though. tell me, what drugs are you taking? Ecstasy, mainly. Yep. And cocaine, sometimes. Right. Co- cocaine's not so much, I wouldn't... I don't know how I'd feel about cocaine being mm. maybe so freely used because it, it's, people do get addicted, but I don't know anybody. So you can use these stuff. drugs, Chloe, at festivals, and then you go back to your normal life, and you're not yeah. an addict, and you, you don't no. crave buying this stuff. None of my friends are. None okay. of my friends are. We all work full-time. Um, but I know people that do alcohol, and their whole lives are ruined. Uh, that, um, there there, are, there are hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of people Chloe, that fought over that category. Chloe, I thank you for your call. Uh, interesting, isn't it? You know, there's two callers there. One who's an habitual user of cannabis, has been for 17 years, says he has no ill effects. Chloe, you know, a young woman from Essex who goes to festivals, takes all sorts of stuff from the sounds of it, uh, and says it's all fine, she's not an addict. Please, folks, this is not, I am not in any way on this phone-in trying to condone the use of these drugs but i do want your experiences and in a minute i'll tell you about drug deaths in the united kingdom you're listening to the nigel farage show here on lbc it's 7 16. prince william is absolutely right when he says when it comes to the question of illegal drugs and whether we should consider legalizing them or decriminalizing them that it's a massive question that we face as a society and yet we never have this debate in parliament do we Nobody ever really wants to talk about this. And it's fascinating discussing this tonight with you on this show. Just to see the sheer number of people that are ringing, texting, tweeting, Facebook messaging. People care passionately about this. And, and uh, you know, and certainly anybody that's a parent cares hugely about this subject. It really matters. And I have always taken the view that we really ought to have a Royal Commission. We really ought to think about this. I hate the fact that so much of this trade is in the hands of the criminals. And I worry about what's actually being sold out on those streets. Whatever name they say it is, I'm concerned. And I say that because the number of drug deaths in England and Wales increased by 10% in 2015. That followed a rise of 14% in 2014, and that followed a rise of 20% in 2013. I haven't got the Scottish figures, they are the English and Wales figures. So there are an alarming number of people. And by the way, these aren't all kids. The most people in in, in age category that are dying, drug-related deaths, are actually between 40 and 50. This suggests to me that a lot of things that are being sold under a label are something different and people are literally getting poisoned by it. I wonder whether if some of these drugs were to be sold in high street chemists and regulated, whether you wouldn't get fewer people dying drug deaths. Contentious issue, tell me what you think. If you think I'm absolutely wrong morally to even suggest that, call me on 0345 6060 973 and I'm going to go next to Steve in Tunbridge. Steve, good evening. Well, hi there, Nigel. Um, I'm very disappointed in you this, this evening. 
Um, Why? Well, thought, well, well Steve, um, Steve, we're having a debate, and I'm saying there should be a royal commission to examine this. I mean, what's wrong? <laughs> what's wrong with that? Well, I, I, I've spoken to you in the past, and I've, I've outed myself as a conservative, and it's going to show in this little discussion here. Okay. First of all, I don't think there's any any reason to have a, a royal commission because the, your starting point is drugs are wrong, are they not? So what we're essentially saying is that. We've, we've given up on something that has been banned. Uh, the starting point is it's been banned because it's wrong. And so many people are using it. So let's make it legal and pretend that it's suddenly good now. So, no, so I'm, not, I, I'm not trying to say it's good, Steve. But I, but I would argue that the vast amount of police time that deals with this, the huge amount of court time, the amount of prison spaces and costs uh, that is dealing with this is actually enormous. And I wonder whether, in society, it's actually our biggest priority. Well, um, I, I, the thing is, I don't think the police take this seriously. I mean, if, if you look at the actual figures of uh, 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 people being arrested for possession, so... Mm -hmm. It seems that the the police are concentrating on the suppliers yes. and pretending that somebody selling something illegal is horrible and bad, but somebody using something illegal is is a victim of some kind, which is the wrong approach. Which is why I don't like this argument of prohibition. There is no prohibition here, and and someone like you, who whose whose argument I've always thought was, I'm against big government. I mean, let's look at it. If if drugs ought to be legalized, you know very well there's going to be a new ministry, new more bureaucracy. And and the other thing, the number one case against Nigel Farage's um, stance mm. is the welfare state. I mean, imagine if somebody, um, especially marijuana, smokes marijuana and, they, and, and something goes wrong with their mind. They cannot say it, it doesn't affect society as a whole, where everyone pays for their taxes. Steve, Steve, I am very worried about the mental health effects that marijuana is having on many of our young people who may, even when they give it up, take years and years to recover. Steve, don't misunderstand me. I hate what these drugs do to people. I hate the fact it ruins the lives of many young people and spoils what they're going to do for the rest of their lives. I hate it, Steve, and I don't want to encourage it. My, my biggest reservation, my biggest reservation about the argument that, that perhaps we should legalise it and set it in the high street. My biggest fear, Steve, is more people would take it. So, you know, I'm seeing both sides of this argument. But what I also hate, Steve, is the fact this is in the hands of the criminals. It's costing us a fortune in terms of police and courts and prisons and everything else. And, and, and I just wonder, Steve, whether whether thinking about a different approach, having a royal commission, having, a, as, as Prince William called for, a national debate. Surely, Steve, that makes sense. Well, tell you what, I've got a, a suggestion. Why don't we try what actually worked in this country in the past? Mm -hmm. Actual deterrent. Okay. So, for, for example, they've used, they're very strict on drink driving, for example. Now, if anyone, no matter how rich or poor you are, if you're caught drink driving, mm. the, the law will really punish you in this oh, country. Oh, I know. Right. I know. I've virtually given up driving, Steve, because of it. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, no, I know all about that. Now, imagine if, if somebody was caught doing drugs. Yeah. and knew that it's going to ruin their life, if, even if they decide, decided to use it for partying, which is happening. I mean, look at festivals. They openly use drugs. Nobody is scared of going to jail. So what... OK, Steve. What should the deterrent be for users of, of drugs? Well, harsh punishment, like jail time. OK, so... What are there, roughly 5 million drug users? So we, we better start building a few prisons, Steve, haven't we? No, not necessarily, because <laughs> if, if people see that that it's serious and the police are taking it seriously, people will be deterred, they'll be scared to use it because okay. they don't want okay. their lives to be ruined. This is the argument that is put forward by Mail on Sunday columnist Peter Hitchens, who feels very strongly about this, and he thinks, I think we've lost the war on drugs. He doesn't think we've ever fought the war properly, and Steve, you're very much in that corner. By the way, Steve, also, very interesting, one thing on this show that I have tried to bring out over the last few months is again and again and again, we see these bombers, we see these is so-called Islamists, and, and most of them are, but a lot of them are, as Trump says, losers, uh, who get hooked onto this crazy ideology. Nearly all of them, Steve, 
are habitual cannabis smokers. So, look, I'm not glorifying it, and I thank you, Steve, for your point of view. I'm going to go to Adam in Birmingham, who's, again, a first-time caller to LBC. Yeah. Adam, good yeah. evening. What should we do? I mean, is, is Prince William right that we need to have a proper national debate on this? I think definitely you need a proper national debate. I think also I'm on the side. I don't take drugs. I w- never want to. I just don't think they're good for you. Yeah. And but the situation we've got now is absolutely crazy. You know, you've got drug dealers and criminals controlling the drug trade, and that means you don't know what the heck they're selling, so you can't regulate it. And that's where probably a lot of the deaths have come from. If you look at the evidence in America and in places where they have places where it's been legalised yep. or at least decriminalised and they can grow their own or mm-hmm. they, there's a supply that you know what it is, you know, actually it shows that it's safer. Um, and I think that that needs to be considered, you know, it's not an ideal situation, but sometimes the best approach is to at least control the bad situation, regulate it, take the taxes in so you can do the rehabilitation if it goes wrong, and do the Arizona approach of of trying to legalise where possible, have it through reputable businesses, yeah, um, and basically make sure that it's safe. And, and also, it and, has the benefit and, of not having a mar- marijuana as a gateway drug, and because they're not selling crack cocaine or heroin. I I don't think those should ever be legalised. No. But at least that won't be alongside the cannabis. No. Okay, Adam, no, look, you've made the point very powerfully, and Adam has never taken drugs, never wants to take drugs, uh, but but thinks we're losing the war on drugs. Um, and, And lots of you, messages galore. I, myself, being a libertarian, thinks drugs should be decriminalised, treating them as a health issue, not a criminal one, I get on Twitter. Nigel, drugs should not be legalised, as it gives the message that it's okay to take illegal drugs. It would lead to more drug taking, says Cathy from Southampton. Cathy, I worry about that too. That, I, I think that is perhaps, perhaps the biggest downside to the argument that these drugs should be legalised and sold in the high street is I actually do think perhaps more people would take them. I don't know. Uh, Brian feels very strongly. I assume the people that think these drugs should be legalised think that they will have no effect on such people who are driving cars, not to mention mental health. Yeah, but Brian, that's happening already. It's happening already. There are. The fact these are illegal is almost making no difference. One in ten of the adult population take illegal drugs. It, it is. It, this is a problem on a massive Massive scale. I'd love to hear, by the way, from anybody involved with policing or the criminal justice system about how much of their time is taken up dealing with this issue. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC. It's 7.30, and Prince William tries to kick off a big debate, saying it's a vital, important national question how we deal with illegal drugs and whether we should consider decriminalising or legalising them. And you are responding to this debate in your droves. But just, if I may, a little bit of Brexit... Remember, the Prime Minister is giving her big speech in Florence this week, where she'll set the way forward for our Brexit negotiations. It was the speech that Boris somewhat preempted in the Daily Telegraph last Saturday. Financial Times today, and, and, and no one is closer to the European Commission or European governments than the Financial Times. FT today says that what May is going to say in this speech at Florence is the government is prepared to pay a 20 billion euro that's about 18 billion pound exit fee to the european union after brexit bear in mind that we are probably under the prime minister going to enter into a transitional arrangement after the end of march 2019 for up to three years that's going to cost nearly 10 billion pounds every year as a continued membership fee and if she thinks we're going to pay that 30 billion And another 20 billion on top, and we're all going to be happy as Larry, she might just have another think coming. So all eyes on the Prime Minister and what she says 
in Florence. And that'll be 2pm London time on Friday. OK, back to this debate. Kim says on Facebook, the smell of cannabis makes me wretched. Do you know, Kim, one of the things I've found over the last few years, going out campaigning, knocking on doors, the number of times the door opens and the smell hits you. One of the first things that made, that made me realise just the sheer number of people, whether it's legal or illegal, this stuff is available virtually anywhere. Peter says, what drugs? Which ones? You can't blanket it. Cannabis is probably the best one to advance with. When you consider the pollution of alcohol, drugs is a poor second cousin. I think a lot of people, Peter, do feel like that. Uh, Rick says, I find it very, hypoc very hypocritical that you can find a pub that serves a virulent drug, alcohol, in every single town, and yet you can't smoke a plant. Interesting point of view. Uh, BJ has a right go at me on text. He says, you have just suggested, Nigel, that terrorists have been found to be linked to habitual drug use, and yet you think they should be legalised. Doesn't make sense. The point I'm making is, whether this stuff is legal or illegal, millions of people are taking this as part of their daily lives. You know, I'm quite sure that you could walk out of this studio into central London and buy drugs within, I would think, within two minutes. Or perhaps in this part of London, it might, be, it might even be less than that. That is how freely available this stuff is. The debate, by the way, I'm not encouraging people to take drugs. I hate drugs and what many of them do to people. But I do wonder whether our approach is right. And we have a new caller going to talk to us about this from Manchester. Singita, who was a first-time caller. Good evening. Hi, Nigel. Um, it's nice to hear from you. Um, I just come from a school of thought where I've seen two completely different approaches. So I was born in Malaysia, uh, lived there all my life, and I studied in the UK. And in Malaysia, the way the government deals with drugs is capital punishment, as you know. Yes. Um, and I have seen that that does not help because people still do it, and they are being criminalized for something that they need help for. Um, in the UK, on the other hand, um, having I work as a pharmacist as well. So I do see firsthand um, what hard drugs can do to people, namely heroin and cocaine, because we deal with making sure they're supported. So do you, so is, and is that, single? it's just for a moment here, so if people yeah. are coming off heroin addiction, you supply them with methadone, is that right? Yes, either methadone or buprenorphin. Um, so it's a more stable drug because heroin only lasts in your body for about four hours. Right. Uh, methadone and buprenorphine uh, is going to stabilize you. So I do understand that school of thought where we give them something to help them yeah. and that way they resort less to crime uh, and they're more stable and can probably get them off it. Um, the only thing that I have to say here is um, I do believe that certain drugs should be legalized, uh, namely cannabis from a medical point of view. It is a plant. Um, I've just been to Amsterdam and I, can't, I have to say I, I, I did smoke weed there as well. But I do think that, um, first of all, it's a good, way to, uh, a good way to generate some income tax for the government to use, because I do think that's important for us. We want to make sure that it's regulated by the right people. Secondly, um, while I was in university um, and throughout my life, I've been really, um, you know, sort of, I've, I've been really fascinated by the discoveries we've had of how cannabis can shrink tumours and cancerous cells. Really? There's so many... Yes, they do. They do. There's so many studies. If you look on Google Scholar, you'll find so many scholarly articles which document how they shrink tumor cells. Uh, you will also see lots of people with stage four cancer that have been told that they don't have enough time left have resorted to um, using cannabis oil, uh, which is extracted in a very method methodological way. And it has helped them with pain, with nausea with also shrinking tumour cells. You, you, you will find a lot of oncologists who also agree with these findings, but it's not regulated. So how do we, how do we exploit this? How do we make sure okay. that... You know, OK, so there are, some, there are some potential benefits from this particular plant. I think, I think Queen Victoria, in some way, was a user of this, wasn't she, uh, when she had severe arthritic problems or whatever it was. So, Singita, you as a pharmacist, if the mm -hmm. law changed, you know, your shop would be selling this stuff, yeah? Yes. And okay, you would, so and, and would and would that make you feel confident that people were going to were, were actually going to get what the label on the tin said, as opposed to something that is ten or twenty times stronger? Yes, I, I would, and also just just to put it forward, if we think about alcohol, it's accepted, it's regulated, but it causes eighty eight thousand deaths a year according to statistics. How many marijuana deaths have you heard about? 
Yes, it does cause mental health problems. Yes. I'm aware of that. Yes. But you need to be predisposed to that gene to have those mental health problems. So why not screen people? Make sure they have a card to say, you know, you have been screened, you are allowed to smoke marijuana because you're not predisposed to this gene. And we regulate it. We come up with a means for our government to, to you know, have more money to use okay. panel towards the NHS to do more research and to help medicate people who really need it. Singiza, thank you for your call. Very thoughtful and very interesting, too, about some of the potentially beneficial effects that this plant cannabis can have. Um, I get here. Imagine legalising drugs. Half the workforce would be doped up, less productive, and who's going to monitor drug driving? What are we teaching our kids? Well, Linda, I understand that. Look, there is already a law on drug driving, as there is a law on drink driving. That exists already, and I think increasingly the police are beginning to use it. So that does exist. And just because something is not illegal and it's legal, and it doesn't mean the workforce are all going to be drugged out of their brains all day any more than the workforce are drunk out of their brains all day. Well, not in most companies anyway. If alcohol was invented now, it would be a class A drug, says Jimmy on Twitter. And Jimmy, have to say I think you're right. Uh, yes, they should be, says a retired police officer. I can tell you, it is impossible to stop drug dealers. Shut down one, another opens immediately. And that's what Russell says, who's a retired police officer. It's where I started this at the top of the hour. Prohibition, it seems to me, simply doesn't work. James from Camden, another new caller. James, tell me, what's your attitude towards illegal drugs? Well, good evening, Nigel. Um, just to start off with, you know, I've enjoyed the personal cheeky wend weekend in Amsterdam from time to time. But what I want to talk about tonight is perhaps how the legalisation of drugs would affect certain communities. And that's my own community, which is the LGBT community. And um, a phrase that maybe your listeners may not have heard of before is, is chemsex. And this is yeah. um, the association of sexual activity with recreational drugs. Mm -hmm. And it's become a huge, huge problem for certain aspects of the gay community within major cities all across the world. And I, I want to emphasize this is not a gay issue. It's a very specific issue. Um, I'm calling up really to share my own personal experience of a dear friend of mine who's really fallen into this scene. And it's a destructive scene which causes dependency on recreational drugs in order to kind of stimulate just the happiness and um, pleasure. And I, I'm quite worried about if we start an open discourse about the legalization of drug use, that might create a more open talk about the association with drugs with sexual activity. Right. So, uh, James, I, I'm, I have little knowledge of this. So is this, and I've heard I'm of it. Sure but, you do, Nigel. But, 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 <laughs> no, 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 but this chemsex drug, but I've heard of it, but I know, I know nothing about it. Is it freely available already, even though it's illegal? Well, I mean, Amber Rudd uh, mentioned this quite recently. It's on the front page of the news, and I was really excited to see the government were taking um, action on this. And of course, it's freely available. It's, um, you know, these are very basic drugs, um, I know, GHB, which is kind of derived from pretty much petroleum and stuff. So mm. it, it, this, these, these are drugs that were historically used, like rohypnol, for, for all sorts of horrible things, which are now being used recreationally. So um, there, are, there, are ne there are networks, the dark web, in which people can freely access this kind of um, uh, illicit material and stuff. So it's worrying how accessible and easy it is to get these things. Right? So, I worry that so if it's freely accessible, James, what's the point of it mm -hmm. being illegal? Well, it is illegal. It's, it's a controlled substance. So, I mean, these these are class A, B, C substances, in most cases, class A substances. But the fact right. is, the, point, the networks that exist through the dark web mean that they are open right. to anyone. OK, so you're worried about the effect this drug is having, in particular within your community, and da perhaps potentially dangerous sexual activity. OK, I'm listening. But, so what would you do? I, I think there needs to be... If, I, mean, I, I am fairly libertarian. I do believe we should all have free will and freedom of choice. I believe that we do open up um, drug legalization. There has to be so much investment, so, so much investment in education and awareness around the, um, the dangerous effects that, that drugs have well, when you begin to associate them with other activities. And potentially, James, potentially, one of the advantages of legalization and taxing the sale of these drugs in chemist shops is we'd have more money to educate people about the dangers and why actually it's a very bad thing to do. Theresa May is now up on her feet speaking to the United Nations Assembly. I wonder whether she'll set it alight the way that Donald Trump did yesterday. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC. It's 7.45. 
Coming up at 8 on LBC, Clive Bull. A London councillor... T- We're having a big debate about whether drugs should be legalised, or at least whether cannabis should be legalised and sold on the high street, regulated, and we would gain some tax money for it, or whether actually that's a terrible idea because more people would do it. Difficult. Now, yesterday, um, among the many things that Donald Trump said at the United Nations General Assembly was he called for reform of the United Nations. And it looks like the British Prime Minister, Theresa May, is backing his idea. So those of us who hold true to our shared values, who hold true to that desire to defend the rules and high standards that have shaped and protected the world we live in, need to strive harder than ever to show that institutions like this United Nations can work for the countries that formed them and for the people who we represent. This means reforming our United Nations and the wider international system so it can prove its worth in helping us to meet the challenges of the 21st century. And it means ensuring that those who flout the rules and spirit of our international system are held to account, that nations honour their responsibilities and play their part in upholding and renewing a rules-based international order that can deliver prosperity and security for us all. Now, the backstory is we're told, is being briefed, that the United Kingdom will withhold 30% of its United Nations funding unless that reform happens. Very different attitude towards the UN, towards the European Union, but there we are. So May um, backing Trump up actually quite strongly and saying it's bloated, it's bureaucratic, it's wasting too much money, it needs to do less and do it better. And if she does back that up with withholding funds, I would say she'd done the right thing. So, back to this very contentious debate on drugs. Uh, Steve is calling from Barking, another new call to the LBC. Steve, how do you feel on this subject? Hello, Nick. Um, Well, Nigel will do, but go on. Nigel, sorry. Um, Yeah, as as a cannabis smoker for probably 20 years. Um, right. I, oh, a re- I the, uh, is this a regular sorry, smoker, Steve? Or Well, I, I smoke probably the same as, as an average guy would drink. You know, I, I don't smoke during the day. I come home from work. Yep. I, you know, I might have a smoke. Um, just the same as anybody would have a drink. Okay. Uh, it, has, I don't, it hasn't affected me at all. I run a successful business. I, we employ 20 people. Um, I'm married, I have a wife, a nice house. Mm-hmm. But I think that they should legalise cannabis for sale at uh, licensed premises where it's controlled. Yeah. Because the problem I see is there's too many kids smoking it. And the kids will go to a drug dealer who often has access to other drugs. By legalising it and, and selling it, it takes that away from people you know you, you you're not going to go to a shop and the guy say i'll tell you what i've got some cocaine or i've got some heroin okay so you make it a habit you make it a habit that those that want this stuff go to one place to get it rather than going into the criminal underworld to buy it the same as amsterdam okay you know, steve can i ask you can i ask yeah. you you know where do you get your supply from um various people i mean i know a lot of people that smoke it i know people that grow it Right. You know, it, it's it, it's readily available, but the people that do sell it sell other stuff. You yeah. Know, I don't use other stuff. I, right. I have no, I've no intention of. Um, right. I I see that cannabis doesn't do me any harm, and and like one of your previous callers said, I don't know if there's ever been any recorded deaths of anybody smoking cannabis. Hmm. But if you compare that to obviously drinking, which is is legal. Um, it, it, it's crazy. So you smoke, you you smoke this stuff every evening, but don't drink alcohol. Is that what you're saying? I don't. No, I don't drink. Right. I hate, I hate drinking. It, it makes me feel makes me feel ill. I feel hungover. You know, I don't. I don't get on with drinking. Right. I find that if I smoke cannabis after work, it relaxes me. I chill out. We watch a film. We have dinner. It's it's nice. All right, Steve. Thank you very much for your call. And by the way, folks, I repeat the point. This is not a show that is promoting the use of illegal drugs in any way at all. Um, And, you know, much as Steve may for 20 years have been a regular user of cannabis and it's not affected his life or damaged it, there are plenty of people out there with mental health issues, etc. And a lot of people dying every single year through the use of illegal drugs, and that worries me. The rate that's growing at worries me very greatly indeed. David is calling me from Canterbury. David, good evening. 
Hello, Nigel. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. You're a first-time caller, David, to the show. What's motivated you? <laughs> no, just uh, just this topic. I find it uh, very interesting. Uh, me, myself, I'm, uh, I'm 35. Um, I'm successful in business. Um, I, I kind of turned my life around when I was younger. Um, I, I dropped out of school um, when I was around, around 15, 16. Uh, I was heavily involved uh, uh, with, with various different drugs. Mm. Um, it, this was just to share my story because I think maybe some of the other uh, listeners might actually uh, relate or this is something that early on that they should be very attuned to. They should, uh, they should find a, um, be, uh, pay attention to this. What it is basically was um, I had a group of friends, obviously. Um, we, 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 we started um, you know, experimenting with alcohol. Um, early age, uh, and then you go into parties and that, and then uh, you, you have them, uh, you know, someone has some weed or something, and you're smoking some weed. Um, and then moving on from there, I remember one of my friends one time, um, they tried the uh, ecstasy one time. Mm -hmm. So all of my friends, they'd, uh, they tried it, and um, that I remember that particular night like it was yesterday, but they all tried it, and they, they could walk away from it like it was, uh, like they were just uh, taking caffeine. And uh, it grabbed a hold of me, myself, it really did. And um, my point is, is that a lot of drugs, they take different routes through different people's minds. So they, they, they affect people in different ways. Yes. And it's very important to realize that. There was a young lady that called up earlier on and she was talking about cocaine and she does MDMA at the, uh, mm, at the festivals. festivals yeah. Stuff. yeah, yeah. But I, I could tell by her tone of voice and stuff that she's quite new to it. And it's, it's very, very dangerous. It's so dangerous. Well, she said she wasn't addicted to it. Now, whether she's telling the truth or whether she's in denial, I, I, I just don't know. But you got hooked on this stuff. So, so David, are you now free of all this? I'm completely free of it. I don't even like every now and again. I, I might have a, a you know a glass of wine with some dinner. Yeah, but that's it. You know. And how but, did you um, it, it, how did you do this? To, how did you turn your life around? Was it counselling? Was I mean, what was it? I to be complete, to be brutally honest, I um I did so much. I did so much ecstasy. Did so much MDMA that it actually uh, it, it affected my mind. It affected. Um, mm. I, I researched into it. All I can say is like. When, when you use these drugs, you kind of you deplete the amount of serotonin in your mind, which is like kind of the happiness, or the, the you know to give you enthusiasm in life. And I I, I went to the doctor, and they they put me on um, they put me on uh, paroxetine, uh, an antidepressant. I'm yeah. now off it, and I felt that that did help. That did kind of pick me up. Well, well it done, you. Drew, it definitely drew attention to the fact that I was playing with fire. Hmm. Mm. And that's the thing. That's the that's what I wanna, that's what I want to put across. I think there's so many young guys now that I see when I'm out, and that you know they they they, they go to festivals or they go to gigs, and, and and they 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 play with these drugs, and they they think that it's it's like alcohol. I mean, alcohol is dangerous because it's a. I feel alcohol is a slow burner. Um, it gradually yeah. creeps up on you as you get older. That's but 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 MDMA and uh, and um, uh, cocaine. David, you've ecstasy, you've dangerous. David, yours is a fantastic phone call because you've gone down the drugs route as a youngster having problems. You've got hooked on them. You've kicked it. You said yourself you're doing well in business and well done you. You know the drug the damage drugs can do. Your quote that kids who take drugs are playing with fire is is, is the quote of the evening. But is that an argument for them to continue to be illegal or would it help? if actually we legalised them and sold them in the high street. What do you think? OK, my opinion on that... Quickly, you've got ten is, seconds, uh, David. I, OK, I think cannabis should be legal, because when I was younger, I would have liked to have a milder strain. Yeah, when well, well that's what I... Dealer, and that's exactly, David, what I think. Thank you. David, ending on that note, that what is being sold by illegal dealers as cannabis actually is, in most cases, very much stronger than the leaf itself. It's doing a huge amount of harm. Prince William is right. Let's have a Royal Commission on this. Let's have a proper debate. Let's see what the effects are on countries that have decriminalised or legalised. But please, can we have the debate? You've been listening to The Nigel Farage Show here on LBC. I'm back tomorrow evening from 7. Coming up at 10, it's Ian Collins. But up next, it's Clive Bull. Nigel, thank you. We'll uh, keep you updated on what Theresa May is saying to the UN. Uh, also, reports today suggesting Theresa May will...